A lot of confidence, it seems, uh, regarding this 30 billion euro aid package that was granted to Greece. Uh, we still haven't heard any kind of signals from the Greek government that they'd want this to be activated. But we know that they are in a very difficult situation. We are seeing the euro dollar looking slightly better. The question is that is this aid package going to set a dangerous precedent for other European Union countries that are facing debt issues? Depends how you, you uh, determine and, and actually define dangerous. Uh, I think they had very little choice in the matter. I mean, it's, it's a big figure, and if you add in the, the IMF's contribution, another 15 billion, talk about 45 billion euros. That's a lot of baklava and lumi for the, for the, for the cheese <laughs> Play nice, Chris, for the, the Greek, Greek, Greek economy. Uh, no, in all, in all seriousness, I think you have to try and um, uh, split out the political and the economic side of things here. Make no mistake, the Greek government's in no different to any other uh, political uh, organization in the sense that um, they have major problems regarding how they get their budget deficit down to more manageable levels. By, by, by that, I mean less than 3%. Now, there's only one way you do it, and it's, it's through a very severe and quite a vicious structural adjustment program. It's going to have to happen. But they have put something like that in place, though, and it seems to be working for now. But when you keep in mind that we are going to be seeing unemployment rising this year, it does create concerns in terms of tax revenue. Yeah. yeah they've only just scratched the surface. Mm. Uh, as I say, to get it down to those kind of levels will take uh, much, much more. And the, the, the $64,000 question, or the 45 billion euro question, is uh, do they have the bottle to do it? Do, do they have the guts to do it? And, 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 and that really is, is what it hinges upon. Mm. Because, you, as you're quite right, unemployment will go up, taxes will go up, um, the economy will probably, uh, and, 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 and I hasten that, probably uh, shrink for, for the next few years. Mm. Um, as you see consumers uh, cutting back in their spending all around, a change in, in, in mindset. And, and, and beyond Greece, we're talking about uh, countries like Spain. We've mentioned this before, Portugal, uh, Italy. Uh, and, and, and the big one, of course, is the UK. They've got an election coming up on the 6th of May, and you may well see a hung parliament uh, eventuating in, 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 in that situation. Well, Chris, uh, when you look at that uh, you know, 30 billion euro aid package, which, of course, has been put together by European Union members, it just means that they're exposing themselves to even more debt that has uh, that has come from Greece because we already know they have substantial uh, exposure to Greece's debt. So they're also putting themselves in dangerous territory. When I say a dangerous precedent that will be set, because we know it's not only Greece that's under pressure, it's Italy, it's Spain, it's Portugal. So if you do give a bailout package, an aid mechanism to Greece, you've got to do the same for the other countries. So it'll be interesting to see what does come of the other countries and their fiscal worries. But of course, when you give someone something, you have to give the rest as well. As you said, you've set the precedent. And Greeks are a three hundred billion dollar economy. Spain is four times that size. Mm. Um, and uh, as we as we said in this program before, you've got you've got some very profound um, structural economic problems in in, in in Spain, notably unemployment at eighteen percent plus. So. Uh, but by doing that, uh, as, you, as you rightly say, uh, you can't uh, give one to, 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 to give aid to one country and then not give it to another. So yeah, uh, it's, it's far from over. But as you, as you were saying earlier, that the markets I think have reacted favourably to this, and the euro strengthened. Well, speaking of deficits, we had the U.S. Uh, deficit in the first half of uh, fiscal 2010 down by 8%. Uh, so that looking uh, slightly better, uh, totaling 65.4 billion dollars compared to 191.6 billion dollars. Of course, uh, quite a big imbalance there, but we also heard uh, quite a lot of news and noise coming through from the Obama administration saying that they do want to get their deficit down to 3%. It'll be interesting to see what moves they make to try and get that level. And of course, one of the big things in the background in the Obama administration is the fact that uh, they've pushed through this, this health care plan. And that's a very expensive exercise. I mean, many would argue that it's a very necessary exercise, sure, but it's going to cost an awful lot of money. So, so doing that uh, over the next few years is going to cost, uh, cost a, 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 a tremendous amount uh, of money, and it will make getting that deficit down to the kind of levels you're talking about increasingly difficult. Mm. Uh, turning our attention to Alcoa, came out with results after the closing bell in the U.S. yesterday. Uh, profits is exactly what we expected, 10 cents a share from a, a loss of 59 cents a share this time uh, last year. Revenue, though, came in worse than expected. In terms of the U.S. earnings, what are you expecting? Because we keep hearing it is about revenue growth because that is the real sign that the recovery is underway. Also, just keeping in mind, we had the National Bureau of Economic Research yesterday, which basically de declares the start and the end of recession of recessions, and they basically said they can not as yet declare the end of the recession so it still creates quite a lot of concern in terms of where the US economy is headed. Well in fact th that was the body if I'm not mistaken that declared the the start of the recession starting I think in December 2007 so you know it's, it's gone on for an awful long time 
And, and I think it's quite, uh, it's, it's quite uh, instructive to note that they're saying, well, okay, things are looking better, there's no doubt about it, but is it finally over? Look, I think it probably is. But, uh, you know, they, they, they want to make, uh, make, make very, very sure that uh, they're not jumping the gun on this one. Look, I think earnings season, um, yes, we, we have to see um, a gradual improvement in earnings coming out of the U.S. Uh, uh, most indicators you look at are telling you things are improving. And, and even unemployment, which up, up until fairly recently has been the, the big sticking point, is starting, uh, albeit slowly and grudgingly, to, to make an improvement. So yeah, I, th I think we will we'll see gradually improving earnings coming out of the country. Retail sales in South Africa is going to be under the spotlight tomorrow. And uh, a contraction of 1.7% is what we saw for the month of January. And people are expecting growth of 0.6%. Most of the investors that I speak to say in terms of finding value in the market, retailers are definitely not offering value because yeah. they've run quite hot. Where yeah. to from here, given that we've already seen an interest rate and cut in South Africa, are consumers going to be going out and spending? Or are they going to be leveraging down their debts and perhaps saving as well? Yeah, look, I, there's, there's, pe there's pent up demand. I know you're spending, yeah. Chris, but look, you know. <laughs> there's pent up demand out there. The, uh, the, the, the make, make no mistake. Uh, and at some point in time, they will come back in force. The very fact that we're probably looking for a marginal positive uh, bit of growth in retail sales this month uh, for, for February uh, tells you that they are probably coming back. But um, it's going to be a long haul. And as you rightly say, I think a lot of uh, investors have discounted this already in the price of, of retailers. They're not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'm, I'm of the view, and, and increasingly of the view, that in fact uh, this, this, this turnaround is probably going to be more profound than, 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 than we imagine. Even house prices, the biggest single uh, purchase that, that, that most consumers will make, are starting to turn around now. So everything is coming into place. We've got lower interest rates coming through. That may have come around because uh, the authorities would like to see a, a weaker rand. Uh, but nevertheless, it's all grist to the mill as far as consumer spending is concerned. So hopefully, we'll see a, a positive uh, print coming out on Wednesday and, and positive prints thereafter. And it's been a long time in coming.